Have you ever struggled to come up with your next best creative idea? One season, you're crushing it. You got ideas flowing and going and you're just cranking through and you're like, oh, I'm a creative genius, oh, right? And you are just killing it. But then the next thing you know, you've got nothing. It's like creative famine, right? There's no food in the land. There's no ideas in the land. And you just can't make anything no matter how hard you try. Well, you're not alone. And today I want to share my tips for generating and capturing new ideas uh, almost on autopilot. All right. So it's going to be a good episode. Let's get started. Right, yo, welcome back to the God Frame Show, the podcast where we share life stories and lessons, uh, all to help you, the creative Christian, get unstuck and back to making the art that moves the world. I'm your host, God Frame, and I'm so glad that you decided to spend a little bit of time with me, whether you're listening to it in the car or on your run, or on your drive, or your workout, or whatever, or you're watching me on YouTube, I am so glad you're here. And I think we're going to have a really good conversation today. Uh, I got to warn you, though, my story for today is kind of a nasty one, all right? So fast forward a couple minutes if, <laughs> if you're not into uh, hearing anything gross right now. But uh, pretty much all my life, I've had a nasty habit of clogging toilets, and not just by throwing things into them. I'm talking about with my boo-boo, all right? Like, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this on the podcast. Um, not intentionally, obviously, but I don't know if it's my technique, not to get too much into the details, but I don't know if it's my technique or, you know, the amount of paper I was using. This is already getting gross. I'm about to throw up. Um, for whatever reason, my deposit would uh, would clog the toilet at my house. Or worse, it often happened when I was visiting other people's houses. You know, now every time, whether I'm going here at the house or we're out, you know, visiting someone, my wife always tells me to courtesy flush uh, every time we visit somewhere. And it gets on my nerves. And I'm like, no, I don't feel like flushing while I'm still sitting on the thing. Like it just sprays up and hits your butt. Like it's too much. It's too much. All right. I'm not courtesy flushing, not doing it. All right. But the thing is, usually when, you know, the, toilet gets clogged up, we can just get a plunger, right? And just like, you know, get it done, get it out of here. Occasionally you'll need a, a plumber if it gets bad. It's never gotten that bad. All right. I'm not that horrible people. All right, chill. Uh, but usually you need some sort of tool, some sort of, you know, plunging device to get that toilet unclogged, something to get the, the, the water flowing again. And in the same way, we as creative people need a steady, clear flow of ideas uh, to keep making art that moves the world, right? Like if you if your creative pipes are clogged, my friend, <laughs> today I'm going to give you three tips for getting those ideas flowing again, all right? So get your plunger. Like I'm tired of this analogy. It's nasty. Uh, get ready. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> All right, here's my first tip for, you know, consistently generating a, a clear, flowing, steady stream of creative ideas. First thing you got to do is create an environment that helps your ideas flow. Create an environment that helps your creative ideas flow. Uh, so think about this. Have you ever just felt like your environment was off? Like you couldn't really put your finger on it. You're not really sure why, but something about where you are or where you were, was just kind of off, right? It's probably an environment where your ideas were not free to flow. It was just off. It's just weird. Something's just not right. And so this really, this tip is about, you know, charging your senses with creative juice, all right? It sounds all <laughs> way too crazy, but this is, just go with me, all right? This is about charging your senses uh, for optimal creative juice flow, all right? And it's different for different people. So you got to pay attention, first of all, to what makes your senses light up. 
All right. So is it sight? You know, some people love a lot of white space. Some people like soft earth tones. You might like bold, vibrant colors and pinks and purples and, you know, neon. Like that may be your thing. Um, you pay attention to the sounds that you like. Do you prefer a completely silent environment? Or do you like the low rumble of kind of a busy coffee shop in the afternoon? Or do you like playing your music really loudly and, and like it's blasting in your headphones and like, oh, you're just going. And that's how, that's how you get your creative juices flowing. What is your thing? And then you got to think about the setting. Like, do you prefer being indoors, you know, or, or in a small, uh, confined space? Or do you prefer, you know, a large space or even outdoors in nature? Like what, what is your thing? What is your vibe? You got to find what's going to make your creative juices flow and do whatever you can to get in that environment or better yet, create that environment for yourself as much as you can. When I worked at uh, this company in Atlanta, uh, the startup, one thing I loved about the offices was there were a lot of rooms, a lot of the conference rooms had like floor to ceiling uh, dry erase boards. It's like it was literally dry erase paint from floor to ceiling. So instead of having a board, it was like, boom, you got like a wall or three walls in this room. And I would often go and just retreat to those rooms and just grab some markers and just go ham, like hashing out ideas, thinking through concepts, uh, brainstorming, like just just getting my juices going. And for me, that's one of the things I love is just having blank space to create on, whether that's my notebook. I carry it around with me everywhere. I have this like large sketchbook, but I don't sketch. I like write things. Um, or having, you know, a large canvas or a large, you know, whiteboard or whiteboard wall or ooh, even, even better, a whiteboard room. Like, oh, a dry erase room. I want one so bad. Um, you know, with, with just the right, just the right environment. Like it, it's got a certain smell. Like I like, you know, soft kind of cinnamony, sometimes vanilla-y, sometimes kind of fruity scents, but not too crazy. Nothing like out loud in your face. Um, you know, and I like kind of a low rumble of, you know, that coffee shop feel. A friend of mine, uh, Risha, showed me this website called Coffivity. And basically you go to this website and you push play and it, it plays the ambiance of coffee shop sounds. And I'm like, yo, this is so dope. Uh, I like, you know, like a, uh, like a lo-fi playlist, a good like Afro beat playlist sometimes with no words. Like, you know, I, I've just learned that there's certain elements that I thrive in when I'm trying to generate my best creative ideas. And I think you should do the same thing. Don't just out of nowhere, get up in any sort of environment and just be like, all right, whatever, I'm just going to create something today. Like, take time, set the mood, you know what I'm saying? Set your environment up in a way that's going to be conducive for your creative ideas to flow. My second tip for ensuring that you have a constant, steady, clear, poop-free stream <laughs> of creative ideas is to establish a routine for creativity to happen. Establish a routine, which I know sounds crazy because creativity is often so spontaneous, right? Ideas come from out of nowhere. Inspiration hits at any given time of the day. It could be three in the morning. It could be midnight. You never know when an idea is going to come your way. But I also believe that there is power in setting aside regular time for creativity. There was an author who said, uh, you know, I only write when I'm inspired creatively. It just so happens that I'm inspired every day from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Here's another example. Maya Angelou would rent a local hotel room and then go there and write. And she would arrive at 6.30 in the morning and she would write until 2 o'clock p.m. And then she would go home and do some editing and she would never sleep at the hotel. But she set aside those times for creativity to happen. Here's the deal, man. Like we live in a very cluttered, crazy world already, right? And we're already fighting for time to create and, and, and trying to just muster up enough energy to stop earth for a second to, you know, to make your thing. It can be very exhausting and it can slow you down even more and prevent those creative juices from flowing. And so I really believe in setting aside time to make things. I'll tell you a quick story. I was brushing my teeth one day 
and um, I dropped my car off at the you know repair shop. I had to get something done to it. Uh, and then I came home. I, brec- I had breakfast. I took a shower. And even though I had brushed my teeth early in the morning, I started brushing my teeth all over again before realizing that I had already done it that morning. Uh, and But that's how habits work. Like, you just you do them. They become autopilot after a while. And, you know, I mentioned on another episode that, you know, our, lo- our minds love routine. Our minds love habits. And so why not make it easy on yourself and create a dedicated, habitual time and space where you're going to create what you create? That way you don't have to think about it. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to try to squeeze time in on your calendar. Like, go ahead and set aside that time. And I promise you, when you show up consistently in that space, your brain is going to start to realize like, oh, wait, it's time to create. Like it's, you know, 10 in the morning or it's whatever time you set aside and we're in this environment. So, ooh, bring on the ideas, right? Your brain will thank you. All right, I got a couple more tips for you, but first we're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. I'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by Lamar Haley Entertainment, helping global brands and creators leverage music, film and TV, and digital content to engage audiences on a human level. Discover more at LamarHaley.com. Being a creator isn't easy. Whether you're juggling last minute deadlines, working with difficult clients or team members, or you're just not feeling confident in the things you create, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, frustrated, like no one understands what you're going through. Well, here at Team Godframe, we got you. That's why we created the Godframe mailing list, a weekly-ish newsletter full of stories, tips, and inspiration to help you thrive on your creative journey so you can get back to making art that moves the world. Get that creative boost you've been waiting for from Godframe straight to your inbox. Sign up now at godframe.com slash mailing dash list. Got a question you want to get answered on the show? Or you just want to give a shout out? Now you can. With the Anchor platform, you can record a personalized voice message for a chance to be featured on an upcoming episode of The God Frame Show. Leave a message now at godframe.com forward slash podcast. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, I got another tip for you for unclogging your creative pipe toilet thing and getting your ideas flowing smoothly, almost on autopilot. Uh, my next tip for you is to arm yourself with the right tools. You got to have the right tools in your tool belt. Uh, how many times have you had a brilliant idea? And then, you know, you thought like, oh, I'm going to remember this. Like, I'm not going to write it down. I'm not going to capture it. I'm just, I'm going to remember. And then an hour later, you forget it. Like, you know, oh my God, what was that thing? What was that crazy idea I had? And like, it's just completely gone. No matter what you do, you can't get that idea back. Here's the deal. I'm not going to get into this whole science of it, but research has shown that our brains are not safe places to hold information. All right. They're just not like the brain is great at forgetting things. Matter of fact, it's even better at having an idea or a thought, storing it way back in the back of your mind for later. And then whenever you don't handle that thing or you forget about it and something triggers you to think about it again in the future, it sends stress signals to your body because something was not handled. It's like, oh, now I got to oh, I got to do the thing. Right. And so now you're, you're flustered, even subconsciously. Um, and so because our brains are not great for holding information. Uh, you got to have tools to get your creative ideas out. Tools that you trust, tools that are safe. Uh, some people use sticky notes. If you're a sticky note person, use your sticky notes. Some people use notebooks. If you're a notebook person, use a notebook. Some people use digital uh, tools like Evernote or Notion or Trello or an Asana. Whatever it is, stick to it. Make it simple. And just give yourself permission. Like, yo, it can be messy. It can be junky. All right. It ain't got to be all pretty and organized. Just have a safe place to dump those ideas because I promise you're going to wish you had them later. You're going to wish you had remembered what you were trying to remember. That world-changing crazy idea that is going to just impact the whole planet. 
you will really kick yourself if you don't capture it in that moment. When it's time to create, you lost it. One of my favorite tools is um, the Voice Memos app on my phone, especially because I create a lot of music. So I'm always, you know, hearing ideas everywhere. You know, whether I'm walking down the street or, you know, I'm working on a project or, you know, talking to my kids, whatever. Like, inspiration can hit me at any time. And a lot of times, because, you know, music is audible, it, it wouldn't make sense for me to, like, try to write down the music I'm hearing, even though I did used to try to do that when I was younger, like junior high, high school. Like, I would literally, I would literally uh, take sheet music. I had a sheet music notebook, and I would, like, if I heard a beat in my head, like, like I would, I would map out, I'm going to draw out all the notes, quarter notes, half notes, eighth notes. If you're into music, you know about this. Um, and like literally map, draw, I don't know why I did this. Uh, it took so much time. Uh, and I don't think I ever revisited those beats in that notebook, but I would like literally notate every note and every rest and every hi-hat and every eighth note and you know it was just too much and so now now i i like to use my voice memos app so it's it's quick and easy for me to just hit record and just capture exactly what i hear in my head so that i can revisit it later when it's time for me to actually sit down and make the music i want to make and honestly just about every song that i've created that's actually done something significant that's done something well whether it's gotten placed you know on a major network or on a production or whatever or with an artist and they've put it out on Spotify almost all of them start with a voice memo from my phone uh, because you know if the idea was great when I first heard it in my head even if I revisit that idea six months later and decide to make that beat or that song it's still a great idea it's not old quote unquote just because it's been in my phone for a while it's still new. Uh, so, you know, trust your system, have, have something that will allow your ideas to get captured in a safe way where you're not going to forget them. You're not going to lose them. Okay. And I actually have a bonus point before I go. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. You're probably a Christian if you're listening to this. So I'll give you this little, little bonus tip. If you want to have a clear flow of ideas, ask the creator for his ideas. I know it's easy to think that as a creative person that you have to just drum up inspiration and ideas and all these world changing projects on your own, like just out of nowhere, like, Oh, I'm just going to hold my breath and boom, here's an idea. <laughs> like, but the reality is you are made in the image of God and he is the ultimate creator. So why not ask him to pour ideas into your soul? Like as humans, we have creative abilities, right? We have creative powers. I'll give us that. And we create some dope stuff. But imagine it like if we're able to generate ideas on our own, like the ones we've seen and even the ones you've done with your hands at times, imagine how much better your idea will be when you let it come straight from God himself. When you actually pray and wait and listen and say, God, what ideas do you have for my art? for my project, for my creative endeavor, for my business. Like, I want to hear from you, God. I want to hear from the Holy Spirit on what I should be making. And just watch what happens. Uh, I heard a story of a, a business person. Uh, he was like a VP of finance or something like that. And, you know, I can't remember the details of the whole story, but basically he was really high up in this company. He told a story of how no matter how high he got in his career, he always stopped and asked God for guidance. You know, he would have big board meetings or, you know, conferences, or, you know, speaking engagements, whatever. And before he walked through the door of that conference room, every time he would pause and say, God, I am not creative enough by myself to know what to do or know what to say in this meeting or for this project. So will you please give me the words Please give me the guidance. Please give me your ideas because I trust you. And he had all sorts of astronomical success in his career. Um, and I think it's just really cool to see that, you know, you don't have to, it's, you know, as a Christian creator, like it's, it's not just for the pastors and the teachers, you know, to pray before they do their sermons or, you know, create whatever they're creating. I think it's for all of us. 
you know, no matter what your creative medium is, I think it's something very special when you're able to pause and say, God, I give this to you. I yield my limited, finite thinking to your infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing thinking. Your thoughts are way higher than mine. Your ideas are way higher than mine. Your ways are way higher than mine. So I yield to you. Please speak into what I'm doing and guide my hands and my heart. I think that is very, very powerful. And so I'll leave you with that. All right. Our challenge for today uh, is, you know, I want you to design your ideal ideation space, right? Your ideal creation space. You know, think about your environment. Think about the time of the day or the week. Think about the tools you're going to be using. And like, don't just half, you know, haphazardly, haphazard. How do you say that word? Don't just kind of, you know, barely put any energy behind it. Like put some oomph to it. Take time and think through and experiment with the perfect environment for you to generate ideas and just experiment and share it with me in the comments. I'd love to answer any questions you may have, and I really can't wait to hear what you come up with. All right, so thanks so much for listening and watching this episode. Uh, this is The Godframe Show, and my name is Godframe, your host. I have uh, been so honored to talk with you today. I hope you have a phenomenal, phenomenal rest of your day. And as always, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Get up!